Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my new Let's Play. My name is Siperos and this is Nightmare Frames, a point-and-click adventure game developed and published by Postmodern Adventures, who I think is a solo Spanish indie developer who has already made and published a few other old-school adventure game titles on itch.io. This is their newest game and first Steam release as far as I know, that came out less than a month ago on June 16th. To give you the idea what kind of adventure we are about to enter, let me read the game's synopsis from its Steam page. Nightmare Frames is a supernatural thriller where you'll step into the shoes of Alan Goldberg, in the search for the scariest horror film of all time, an enthralling journey through the streets of the Hollywood of the 80s and small haunted town and even hell itself. Sounds delightfully silly and fun story for an adventure game, possibly even spooky in a campy way, which I like. So, without further ado, let's start our new supernatural thriller and horror adventure in the 1980s Hollywood. So, we start a new game. The guys don't know what the lunatic is that the, that the lunatic is back. I have I have to warn them before it's too late. Okay, so no voice acting. I'll have to do all the reading. Yeah, Moonstone Camp. <laughs> is this like... Is this like the... What was it called? Crystal Lake Camp from Friday the 13th uh, franchise? And this is... And she's one of the camp counselors or something? Uh, can I, I... I guess I can't read that more. No! No! Dana! Hank! Oh god! Will! What have they done to you? I'm too late. Where's Tommy? Tommy! Tommy! I did see a red text here saying sign. I hope Tommy is hidden somewhere in the docks. Okay, alright. No comment... No more comments on them. Well, I guess she commented on them already to the docks. Tommy! Stacy, run! Run away! Let him go, you monster! Get out of here! He'll come for you! I can't take it anymore! Well, shit. Shit. You have been suspecting it for a while. I might have to click here. The climax of Lunatic 2 is identical to the one you wrote for the original movie. So it was a script. You go over the whole script in your mind and end up realizing it has the same structure as its predecessor. You can't show this to Christopher Ruskin. Hmm, well, what does it say? It's kind of hard to read. No wonder you have had such little interest in the script for Lunatic 2. All your thoughts are focused on the ambitious project that will take you back to the times of Melodies of Heaven. Okay, so that's, that's what the poster says. The script that earned you an Oscar nomination in 1980. Oh, good for you. Famous producer Peter Evans is putting heads with the studio ex exec uh, executives to get the project greenlit. According to him, the deal is almost done, which means you are just one step away from leaving the B-movies pit you are in. He was meeting with the executives this morning. You have an appointment later today at his place, hopefully to celebrate. Well, let's hope so. It's getting late, I should get moving. Hollywood, 1985. Right click to look. Okay. Left click to interact. Okay, so right to move. And left to interact. The cemetery of the bad <laughs> the cemetery of the bad ideas you you come up with when you are not focused. Which happens a lot lately. IBM. 
like an old TV. You can't remember the last time you turned it on. It was to try out the latest sensation in computer narrative, a mind forever voyaging. The text were good, but you got the feeling that the author was wasting his talent writing for computer games. Ah, oh, it's a computer, okay, IBM. Okay, what do we have here? Magazine? You have already flipped through that issue. George A. Romero tries to milk the success of Night of the Living Dead for a third time. <laughs> a theatrical director from Chicago makes his movie debut with an adaptation of an H.P. Lovecraft short story for Charles Band's Empire. Hmm, which one I wonder? Which story? Lastly, an interview with Jenna Dreyfus, the Scream Queen from Campfire Psycho in which, among other things, she talks trash about you. What? Why? What have we ever done to her? Letters? You think about showing a couple of them to the police. In particular, the one that threatens to shoot you with a sniper rifle, and the one whose author thinks the best way of ending your life is planting a bomb in this very apartment. Well, that sounds very serious. But, you know, they are probably written by some harmless, sit-ridden teenager too busy jerking off compulsively to an Elisa poster. Okay, yeah. Um, more letters. No, oh, okay, it's, a, it's the same thing. A mug. You can't remember how many times you have filled it with coffee today. Mm, tray. It's a complete disaster that you need to fix. Though the best thing would be to start anew. Snort. Hmm, what books do you have here? That's where you put your wallet. You take the wallet in the hopes of not misplacing it and forgetting about it again. It's a good thing you always carry a few pills in your jacket so you can pay up so you can pay for caps. No inventory item? Wallet? Okay, so we have an Oh, we have an inventory here. Okay. So here here's the wallet. How much money do we have? Several credit cards and enough notes to get by without an ATM. I think that's one of those money machines where you can where you can deposit money from. And is this? Okay, so okay, so we can adjust the volume uh, here even though it's at max here. There wasn't an options uh well option uh, in the main menu for some reason. Anyway, so we can might as well save the game here. Uh where can we save? What else do we have here? Language is uh, English. The other language was Spanish. Taxi drivers, taxi drivers comments on. Well, let's leave them on for now. Window mode, yes. Text speed normal, uh, yes. Let's continue. Calendar. You have marked the due date for the script of Lunatic 2 with a big red circle. Okay. What posters do we have here? Any references? Lunatic. So this. So this might be a reference to Friday the 13th, maybe. What does it say up there? You can't escape something. Don't go in the forest. 3D, woo. I don't think that's a reference to anything. At least I can't... Uh, at least I can't name, it, name any mov movies it might be uh, referencing. And here it's time to vote. <laughs> President's, President's Day Killer. And that kind of reminds me of Michael Myers from uh, Halloween, the franchise. Campfire Psycho. Okay. And Melodies of Heaven, I think this was called. What time is it? You'll you'll win it up some other time. Oh, okay, it's not working. And you got some awards. Well, that's nice. You glance towards the shelf and realize that a statuette awarded to Campfire Psycho at some festival you can't remember is missing. The breeze coming through the window reminds you that you use it as a doorstop for the hallway. Okay. VHS tapes. You don't usually check the end result of your scripts. Once you have delivered the last revision, you disengage yourself completely from the project and don't give a damn about anything producers or directors do with it. Even so, you show them off as a trophy, and you wonder why. You don't have an answer. Oh, here's a TV. There's no channel that interests you enough to make you plug in the TV again. Okay, have I 
look at looked at everything is the way to highlight any interactables. So far, it doesn't seem like it. A box. New inventory item. 3D glasses. Okay. A window. You look out the window. Movies taught you to love the streets of Los Angeles. Reality to hate them. Okay, I guess we are pretty much done here. We have looked at everything, I think. So do we just leave? Welcome to LA, United Taxi. Where do you want to go? I'm not sure exactly. When you get in a taxi, the driver will talk to you. You can disable this feature in the options menu. Okay, so that's what the... Uh, uh, the taxi... Uh, dialogue option or whatever it was in the options menu. Alan's uh, apartment, that's where we just came from, I believe. Ruskin Productions, Peter Evans Mansion, Joe's Diner. Well, we're supposed to meet up with Peter Evans, I believe, so let's go there. What the... Thanks for your cooperation, officer. Good evening. Oh, Goldberg. What a tragedy. What happened? What happened? Where's Evans? I'm afraid I have got bad news. Oh, shit. Evans committed suicide. What? <laughs> we are in shock too. We can't seem to make sense of it. Alan and I think alike. But... Why would he commit suicide? What are you doing here? I had an appointment to talk about the project. Yeah. Ah, yes, well, let us talk about it, okay? Why would he commit suicide? He had everything a man could aspire to. Judging from that mansion, yes. We don't know what goes through other people's minds, Goldberg. Truth is, he seemed more short-tempered than usual lately. But who isn't in this city? So what are you going so what are you doing here? Evans had some essential documents we needed in order to close the sale of the studio to the Japanese. The LA chief of police allowed me to go in and get them. Very kind of him. Maybe he bribed them, the police. Hold on, you are selling the studio? That's the plan. They are in charge from now on. Oh, okay. Lucky me, they want to keep the current corporate board. Yeah, lucky for you. As you know, Evans was the only one uh, protecting uh, your project from the rest of the executives. Now that he's gone, I'm afraid we won't be following through with the movie. Well, son of a bitch. Anyway, I don't think it would have been uh, made even with Evans, now that, now that the studio will be in the hands of the Japanese. They are more Godzilla than Kurosawa, if you know what I mean. Ah, I really love Kurosawa movies. The trend is action heroes like Stallone or Schwarzenegger, or other or otherwise movies like the ones Ambling is making. I don't know who that Ambling is. I'm afraid there won't be any room for high-budget drama such as the ones you are proposing. Well, we are grateful for Peter Evans' work. The studio pulled through its worst times thanks to him. If only, there, if, only, if only there was voice acting here. But it's 1985, Goldberg. Teens rule the box office now. I hope you understand. Anyway, since you are here, I have got something to show you. I found this in the desk next to the office phone. Mm. Barry Lando pulls out a letter with a leather head that reads Flying Saucer Pictures. It seems to be a small, low-budget studio focused on fantasy or horror movies. You can't grasp why Evans committed suicide, but even less why that was in his office. Peter Evans despised this kind of small producers that capitalized on making exploitation movies instead of making art. 
It took a lot for you to stand up for yourself, given that you were responsible for several masked killer movies. Curious, isn't it? Evans dealing with this kind of scum. You know what? You can keep it. Your talents are more in line with this trash than with our studio. Well, that's a very nice thing to say. Rude. I have proven I can be more than a slasher screenwriter. Let me remind you I was an Oscar nominee. So was Chur last year. Who the hell is Chur? Take it. My hand's getting tired. New inventory item, leather. I wish you much success in your career, Cold Bear. Cold Bear? You'll need it. Hollywood is changing. It's not the 70s anymore. Goodbye. If there was ever a chance to touch heaven in Hollywood again, it's gone. You're surprised to realize, though, that spending the rest of your career stuck in the B-movies business is the last thing you are worried about right now. Peter Evans was an important figure to you, not only because he believed in your project and tried to move heaven and earth to get it made. Peter Evans was the man you wanted to become. Wealthy, well-connected, and able to bring top-tier movie projects to life. Now he's dead. By his own hand. How is it possible for someone who had everything they wanted in life to end up like this? Well, I guess rich people have their own problems too. You look at the leather Barry Lando just gave you. Dear Mr. Evans, I do know what you are talking about, indeed. I thus beg you to handle this in person. You will surely understand that this matter should be dealt with discreetly. Kind regards, Glenn Bishop. You marvel at Peter Evans's luxurious mansion and still can't come to terms with the fact of his suicide. You can't understand what one of the most powerful executives in Hollywood could need from one of the most insignificant production companies in Los Angeles. Without the project that could have put you back in the spotlight, with a script for a sequel that's going nowhere, and no desire to make anything else, you decide to delve into why someone like Evans did what he did. Are we 100% sure he committed suicide? How did he kill himself anyway? By hanging or... New location? Okay, I couldn't read the text fast enough. Did it, did, did it say a church or something? A police officer, police tape, a closed fence, and a version to trouble are the factors dissuading you from trying to break into Peter Evans's home. Why would we want to do that? Well, maybe we get a reason later. Stripping off blocks from celebrities' mansions is something only a brain-dead tourist would do. So, can we talk to the police officer? Maybe he knows more. Officer? Sir? So, what happened here? What happened in here? Or oh, there, even. Nothing good. That guy, the movie guy, blew his brains out. Oh, so he shot himself. You need to have a pair you need to have a pair for that, don't you think? You mean balls? Do you know if he left a suicide note? You watch a lot of movies, don't you? Well, you could say that. Actually I write them. More than 90% of the people who commit suicide don't leave any notes. It's a myth. Ah, uh, okay, still, did he leave one? Why are you asking all these questions? Because we are his dear friend? Are you a journalist? No. No, I'm a, I'm a screenwriter. I, I already told you. Have you written something I may have watched? Does Melodies of Heaven ring any bells? Are you kidding? You wrote that movie? What a snoozer. Hey, Mary, my wife, made me go watch it with her. Poor you. I fell asleep. And that's what and that's <laughs> and that's my review. It's okay. She liked it though. I shouldn't be talking about this with you, you know. It's strictly police business. But to hell with that, if I can tell Mary I have been talking to the writer of Melodies of Heaven, 
nice. We are having some communication issues lately. You mean with your wife? This way we'll have something to talk about. Ah, nice. Well, glad to be of help. As for the note... So he did leave one. No, he didn't leave one. God damn it. Anything else you want to know? Okay, well... Was it really a suicide? Hmm. You mean whether someone murdered him and made it pass for a suicide, right? Yeah. I can see your screenwriter mind at work. I'm afraid to disappoint you. Everything seems to suggest suicide. No doors or windows forced. According to my colleagues, the position in which he was holding the rifle looked natural. Okay, so he shot himself with the rifle and not a pistol. So, can I go in? Of course not. I didn't think so. So why did you allow, allow Barry Lando inside? Bribes. Your friend? The one who just left? He is not my friend. Yeah, I saw how glad he was to get rid of you. Orders from above. He seems to have a good relationship with the boss. Mm-hmm. Is that legal? Letting the civilian into a crime scene? No way. He could tamper with that. He would. He could tamper with the scene. Even take vital evidence. Like the letter. He did. Right under your nose. He took some papers. And I'll file a complaint. Don't worry about that. Okay. You could have denied him. You could, you could have denied him entry. I just told you. Orders from above. I'll fi file a complaint. He got cut off. Hey, how about we stop going in circles here? Okay, okay. I'm aware of the situation is an anom anomalous, okay? Anomalous. Whatever that means. Uh, what are you guarding exactly? The crime scene, I would imagine. The crime scene? Yeah, told you. I thought you I thought you all left once the place was sealed. Soon everyone will know a big fish from the movies and blew his brains out and this place will be crawling with journals. Okay, fair enough. I don't know if you know them, but this guy these guys will jump over fences for the chance to take a picture. I don't like the idea of standing here like one of those living statues on Sunset Boulevard. My my thing is patrolling. But my thing is patrolling. Okay. But orders from above. Well, okay, I guess we are leaving. I'm leaving. Have a good day, sir. Okay, so there's not really much else that we can do here. Patrol car. Rummaging through a patrol car in front of an officer of the law could be the worst idea you have come up with today. And fence? Trying to climb the fence in front of a police officer, huh? No. Any other crime you would like to commit, Alan? Uh, not right now. Not in front of the police officer anyway. Well, I guess we just leave for now. Where to, man? Okay, our apartment. Ruskin Productions. Peter Evans' mansion, which just came from there. Joe's Diner. And this is the new... Flying Saucer Pictures. Oh, so, so that's the new location that we just got. Why did I think it was a church? Well, let's go there, I suppose, or... Hmm. Ah, let's go there. Wait, this is the place? I see nothing but rubble. If this is the right address, there's no trace of Flying Saucer Pictures here. A taxi sign, some guys, a guy, pawn shop, and what is this, uh, doesn't say what shop this is, let's see, can we, no, the screen doesn't move if we, even if we go here, oh, no, no, hi, we meet again, where are we off to now, uh, just, 
uh, side. Let us return. Okay, uh, I guess we should ask these guys if they know if there's ever been a flying saucer productions uh, building here. Hey, friend. I don't know what they told you, buddy, but I don't sell anything. Uh, no, that's not what I was trying to... Nobody's told me anything. I don't even know who you are and what uh, and, and what do you do for a living. Though I can guess the latter. Oh, can you? What do you want, buddy? I'm looking for the Flying Saucer Pictures offices. <clears throat> offices, even. Flying what? This is 451 Roadside Avenue, right? To know, I guess, man. I think there should be an office here instead of this rubble. Oh yeah, fuck. The movies guy. What a fucking bastard. They say he was the one who caused the building to collapse, and just so he could collect the insurance money. Well, shit. A gas leak or something. The asshole could have blown up, blown up half the street. You gotta, you gotta be a real son of a bitch to do something like that, huh? Mm-hmm, I can agree with that. Do you know where can I find this guy? His name is Glenn Bishop. No idea, man. Hope you'll find him, put behind bars. That's where he belongs. Well, if he really com- Well, if he really committed a insurance fraud, then yes. Do you know anybody who could point me to Glenn Bishop's whereabouts? The owner of the pawn shop. Ah, the one right next to us. But he's not here right now. Ah, okay. I think he's testifying at the police station. A problem with some ju jewels or something. I hope he wasn't selling any stolen goods. He left his cousin in charge of the shop. Mm, okay, I guess we can ask him too. But he's kind of dumb. Don't waste your time with him. But what about the... Laundromat. Maybe they know something. Laundromat. You have never seen one. You have never seen one of those? They are completely unmanned. You go in, insert a coin, and wash your clothes. Clearly you have someone to do it for you. I think that's all. Okay, man. Alright, so we could go and talk to the cousin of the owner of this pawn shop, but what about these guys? Those guys are acting sketchy. Casually, you position yourself to eavesdrop on them. You pay attention to their conversation. Embarrassed, you step away from them when you realize that the man on the right is trying to convince the other one that Missing in Action 2 was shot before the first part, but premiered afterwards. Mm, okay. Uh, well, I guess we go to the pawn shop since we are here. You don't need anything from Fred's pawn shop. But you, but you now know where to find one such store in case you need it. Okay, so we can't go inside and actually talk to the cousin or whatever. Alright. So, can we go to the police station then and look for the owner? Mind if I smoke? It's a Havana cigar. The only good thing those communists have. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the 80s. Anyway, where to? Yeah, it's the 80s. Back when the... Red Scare was also pretty high in in America. Alan's apartment, Ruskin Productions, Pete Evans' mansion, Joe Steiner, site. We can't go to the police station, apparently. Well... Hmm. How long have I been playing, anyway? I have lost the track of time. Well, we, have, ha we haven't really done that much yet, so... Let's go to Ruskin Productions, I suppose. Come on, gentlemen. Splash the cash. You could be helping this poor man right here with all that dough you sc you shrimp by hiring illegal aliens to take care of your lawns. What? You shrimp by hiring illegal aliens to take care of your lawns. That guy, the portrait looked so familiar. He reminded me of this one actor. I don't I don't know his name, but he was in movies like Aliens. 
and Terminator 1 and uh, this Alien vs Predator movie as well, I believe. I don't remember his name, but that's what he that's whom he who he remind reminded me of. Neil Gordon. Mm, Jack. Apparently we know these people's names already. Some lawyers. Well, let's talk to Neil Gordon, I suppose. I told you I wasn't going to grant you an interview, so you can leave the bench free for whoever else needs it. Oh, so he's a journalist? You made that pretty clear, clear last time, Mr. Goldberg. It's hard to forget, you were quite blunt. But I'm not here for you, I'm trying to interview Christopher Ruskin. Couldn't you... No. <laughs> no. Alan and I both think alike. What about this Jack fellow? Well, well. You were to insult me again? What? Again with that? Is this your way of saying hello or what? You told me your career was going downhill so hard that you would rather jump off the 6th street... Uh, we are talked to then end up like me. Come on, Jack, don't be don't be resentful. Even if it did happen 12 days and 46 minutes ago, I don't like to be called resentful. All right, for the for the umpteenth time, I'm sorry. I've got the habit of saying what I think. That's not a virtue. The trick is to think about what you say. Uh, you know what, Alan? You're a strange guy. You don't like people, you freak them out, and yet somehow nobody sends you panicking. And, uh, and nobody sends you packing even, sorry. Packing, not panicking. Anyway, how's it going? Awful. Glad to see you haven't lost that optimism you are known for. Mm, so how's your day going? Nothing yet, but I have just gotten started. Why are you begging in a place like this? I've always wondered why you beg in a place like this. I don't like to hustle from common people. It's hard enough for them to just earn a living. Well, that's nice of him, I suppose. Consider it. But here... Look at all those yuppies. Check out their hands. Look, they are perfect. Most of them waste so much money on manicures. They do fuck all. They make their they make their they make their all money through speculation. If I have got to flee someone, I would rather I would rather it be them. Yeah, I can see that, fair enough. These people are not the kind to give handouts, Jack. They don't even see you. That's what you think? Check this out. You all che cheer for USA, for Africa and all those uh, stars go going. We are, we are the world, but fuck, but fuck those of us standing right here. Sorry, I'm trying to read the text as fast as I can. Hypocrites. There, mister. Try not to waste it on booze. I would waste it on cocaine like you do, but I don't think I would be able to afford it. Have a good day. Okay, it seems to work. Five bucks. That's my that's my day made. See? Okay. <laughs> well, I guess you just call them hypocrites and they give you money. They showed uh, one of your movies yesterday. What? He was a screenwriter too? Which one? The one with the fucking spiders or the one with the fucking ants? 
spiders. And how did and how did you know if you don't watch TV? I read it in the papers. Those movies are in the spotlight again with this whole 50s revival well, that's going on. And I still don't see a single cent from them. Well, oh, that's sad. Now that not that I should anyway. The production company went bankrupt and who knows who's got the rights now. Some asshole must be making crazy money off my work while I'm here uh, panhandling. Though not long ago a couple of journals uh, came for an interview for one of those magazines for wankers. What was it called? Starlock? I felt like a director again, telling them all about how those movies were made. Oh, so he was a director? Okay. Those were good times, Alan. I'm sure they were. I've got things to do, Jack. Behave, Alan. Okay, so sh should we go to the... Should we go in? Dave Morrison. He won't be in the mood for chit-chat right now. So, can we go in? Alan, I never thought I would say this, but I'm glad to see you. Why, thanks. N nice to see you too. Again, James. Yeah, we have got a little debate here. You're the erudite here. Give me a hand. Erudite, I don't know what that is. Pam is saying that the Church of Mother Earth is a cult. Okay. It is. Oh, come on, not you too. You should stop by one day, Alan. Maybe we will. As a guest, of course. We have ex we have exorcists to improve one's mood and see life from a different perspective. I would rather throw myself out that window. You are wasting your time, friend. How about you, Pam? Are you in? I don't get paid enough to put up with this. Okay, I want to see these posters. For some reason you can't seem to grasp, Ruskin is proud of the first movies he produced, and that's why he placed the posters in the entrance hall of the production company. Okay, I can't really see that, uh, all the text. Christopher boasts about the originality of the movie, but to you it's nothing more than a rear window ripoff. Okay, that looks like an undead Nazi officer or something. Is this the one with John Carradine, or is that Shockwaves? I don't know, I can't read it. You never remember. Shockwaves. Oh, okay, thanks. Computer, Pam, James Crosby. Why doesn't Pam have a second name, or surname? Well, water cooler. You don't see any cups around, so you ready yourself to drink directly from the tap when you realize you don't want to be a taken for an eccentric. You turn around to ask Pam to refill the cups. But you see, she's busy, so you change your mind. Okay, well, can we talk to her at least? How's the script going? Uh, fine. I need to touch a couple of things. Problems with the third act, right? Uh, how did you know? I have been working with you for a long time, honey. When everything's going well, you barely say a word. When you try to explain yourself, it means something is wrong. The treatment already showed that you weren't too sure about the third act. But don't worry. We begin shooting next month. There is still time. Okay, so that's that. How about you, Crosby? Pam brought me up. Pam brought me up to speed. Lunatic 2, huh? Wow, you must be happy. Not as happy as you. Oh yeah, I can't stop jumping for it. Um, jumping for joy. Come on, Alan, everyone's talking about the movie. It's a success so far. I even heard rumors over at Warner. You mean Warner Brothers? Rumors? 
They want David they want David Draven, the director, to shoot the next Stallone movie. David Draven, I don't know if that's a real director or not. Though Sly wants to keep George P. Cosmatos. Anyway, L Lunatic's the talk of the town. And did you hear anything anything about the screenwriter? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, I'm sorry. So what are you working on right now? I've taken a couple months off, haven't stopped shooting lately. Though Martin's been calling. Who's Martin? Scorsese. Ah, Martin Scorsese. He wants me in his next movie, Paul. Uh, Paul will be there too. Paul? What Paul? McCartney? Newman. I haven't made up my mind yet. I've also been talking to Brian. Brian May? De Palma. Hey, Alan, are you pulling my leg? I'd, I don't know what to do. I might I might consult with Steven. Steven who? Spielberg. <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Good. So what do you do in that cult exactly? Again with that? We are not a cult. We are a legally constituted church. Okay, call it whatever you want. But what do you do there? We are not allowed to talk about it. Come by one day and see for yourself. That's what cults usually do. They don't want to talk about what they do to outsiders. See? Sounds like a cult. How's that a way of advertising yourself? Uh, yourselves? Just imagine I drop by one day and end up with a melted wax on my chest and four uh, octogenari octogenarians ready to abuse me. Octogenarians? I don't know what that is. Haha. <laughs> Hilarious. For your information, that would never happen. The teachings of the Church of Mother Earth are based on kindness and common good. Well, that sounds nice. Mm, do you really think the Earth is a living being? Of course. What seems odd to me is for people as clever as you, you not to believe it. Mother Earth's always been sending signals, but we never paid attention until she, uh, until, until she chose Joseph as her intermediary. She speaks, she speaks through him. Yes. Tells him what to do. Exactly. Let's drop the subject. I'm, I'm feeling insulted. <laughs> Why? You are treating me like a four-year-old. Well, I guess we see him later. All right, think about it. Something tells me that we are gonna. What should I? Th what should I think about? Well, Pam. As we were saying. We were not saying anything. Well, anyway, like I was saying, something tells me that we are going to visit that cult at some point in this game. File cabinet. Well, I have no reason to go uh, through any files right now. Alan, I have, he I have heard the news. What a shame, huh? Indeed. Does that mean your project? Fucked up, yeah. I don't want to sound callous at, at a time like this, but... This is good news for Ruskin Productions. Well, gee, thanks. Our Alan isn't going anywhere anytime soon. I don't have much of a choice. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. Do you know what I was? Uh, do you know what I was staring at through the window when you got here? The city at your feet, right? Makes you feel powerful. You are impossible. Come here. Look towards Sunset Strip. That billboard ad on the corner by Tower Records. What do you see? A brown and blue plot. Come on, Alan. What do you want me to see? The sun's reflecting off the window and I can't see a damn thing. It's the, luna it's the lun lunatic poster on Sunset Boulevard. Do you know what that means? We can afford it. We are making big money thanks to you. Well, that's something, I suppose. Do you know where I've been? Do you know where, where, where I have been today? Surprise me. In a meeting with Toyner, 
they are releasing an action figure line of horror monsters. And you know who's going to be the star? The Lunatic. They are all along the same lines, Alan. Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, uh, all these uh, classic horror movie uh, villains. And thanks to the movie's success, they want your creation to be the star figure. Now that's very, that's very nice. Isn't it wonderful? I would say yes. A lunatic toy. Wonderful. I know it's not the figure, a figurine you would like to have in your hands, but we are on the way. We are, but we are on the way, Alan. We'll soon be able to afford higher budget movies, as well as other genres. Well, that's good news, is, is it not? The day will come when you can write anything you want, and I will gladly produce it. But the success of horror movies is what will allow us to take bigger risks. It's pretty straightforward, right? Sounds straightforward to me. I'm sick of writing the same thing over and over, Christopher. That's all. I know, I know. But you are so good at it. We have won awards thanks to you. And I'm not letting you go. And now, if, you, if you'll allow me, I'm going to keep admiring our future. Okay, well, you just keep doing that then. We have some drinks here. Cabinet. More posters, I believe. I have seen these already. You don't need them. You already have them at home. Yeah, these are the same posters, posters from our apartment. Can we take some of these drinks? You don't feel like a, you don't feel like a drink right now. Or you don't feel like drinking right now. Though low, the powerful California sun blinds you when looking through the window. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna end this episode here. And in the next episode, we we could go to the diner, I suppose. There wasn't really any other location where we could go to as of right now, I don't think. We couldn't even go to the police station and look for the owner of the pawn shop, for instance. But let's go to the diner in the next episode, see who we meet in there and where we can go from there. So, until then. Thank you for watching and see you next time for more Nightmare Frames.